raus. Hello viewers, in this video we're going to be discussing uh, how to build um, almost any 135th scale model tank so that it is fully RC. And uh, I'm going to be showing off this Leopard 2A6 uh, right here um, that I have uh, built um, in the same way I'm about to show you. And um, hopefully show you guys how to avoid some of the problems that I ran into. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. So first let's talk about um, the whole running gear system. And so um, to start off, um, I took these two, uh, probably 3.3 volt motors that I just had laying around. I might be able to uh, find a um, Amazon link for these. But um, anyway, um, I created a wood jig uh, that's just a little, almost popsicle size, stick sized piece of wood that I epoxied onto the model. And uh, where that back um, uh, running sprocket is um, that actually powers um, the tracks in real life, um, I was able to drill a hole there um, for where uh, I wanted uh, those two motors to be. And they protrude enough out that it actually fits pretty well. And so you're going to notice a lot of this is going to be uh, your own preference and you're going to have to kind of work out um, how you're going to make this work essentially. Um, so uh, the next part um, would be uh, the batteries. And so I have two um, small LiPo batteries, I have a link to them, um, that um, each one powers um, one side of the tracks. So uh, one powers one of the motors, the other powers the other motor. And um, you could probably come up with a way to only use one, but uh, they, they fit pretty well. And um, for reasons I'm about to explain, uh, having two uh, batteries was actually uh, a much simpler way to go about doing this. And so uh, the next thing I'll talk about is the uh, remote and the receiver. And so I decided to go with a um, very, not, it, it's a cheap but very capable um, controller that has uh, a lot of different extra channels and so it um, was uh, quite appealing for this project and um, this controller allowed me to set up um, something called a uh, differential thrust which is normally used on uh, two engine RC planes but um, for this build you can use it as a uh, way to control the movement of the tank and so Essentially, um, when you move uh, your right stick forward, both tracks will move forward and the entire tank will move straight. But when you start to move the stick a little bit to the left, it'll start to swerve the tank to the left. And so this allows you to accurately steer the tank in whichever direction you want, rather than having um, maybe two different switches or um, potentiometers that are controlling those two tracks. And um, moving on from that, um, I'll start talking about the turret. Uh, the turret um, has a servo uh, that's placed parallel to the um, gun breech. And so this is another thing, you just kind of have to hack it in to get it to work. And it's not going to be the same on every model. And so I've, I've seen a, some other inspiration where uh, they were able to fit the servo further back in the turret and have some sort of wire that runs in between that actually controls uh, the pitch of the uh, gun. But um, I was able to fit it um, parallel and it uh, works pretty well like that. 
and it's probably the most simple way to do it. Uh, and this servo runs back down to the turret and uh, into your receiver. And um, I didn't know slip disks existed <laughs> at the time of building this, but probably would have been uh, nice to have one of those. So um, on my Leopard, uh, you can only turn the turret so many times before the wires get too uh, knotted up. And so um, another cool um, function that this tank includes is a uh, gun stabilizer. And this stabilizer isn't uh, really like anything that you would buy from a hobby store. Uh, it's built off of a um, drone um, motherboard type chip that uh, basically can sense the roll and yaw input. And so I would not recommend doing this uh, just because it didn't have as high of results as I would have hoped. It's, it's too uh, sort of laggy. Uh, it's not it's not as continuous as I would have hoped and it I have it set up so that um, The motherboard thinks that it's on a drone and it thinks that it's controlling the pitch of a run cam and so that's feeding that info to the server servo that's controlling the pitch of the um, gun barrel and It works well enough. It's fine um but I'm gonna have a whole wiring diagram I'll show you guys that, that kind of connects all this together. And there's a few other components like um, the <laughs> it acts as a mechanical switch basically. So um, I couldn't figure out a way to um, relay the information. It's a relay. That's what it's called. Uh, relay. Uh, input from the controller uh, so let, let's say I flip a switch on the controller and it sends it to the receiver how am I gonna basically have that switch between manual gun control and then stabilized gun control and so the solution I had was to take a uh, small switch place it next to a servo have that servo run back to the receiver and so when I flip that switch on the remote, sends it to the receiver, receiver tells the servo to move that arm and it flips that switch, switch completes a circuit. And that basically is how I swap between manual gun control and then the stabilized gun control. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the internals. And next I'm gonna do a um, walkthrough on uh, the paint job and steps for that.